writing a CER. So this is part two. Remember we talked about in part one that a scientific explanation involves three parts. It involves a claim, it involves evidence backing up the claim, and reasoning tying the claim to the evidence or justifying why the evidence supports the claim. And so this is part two where we're going to focus on evidence. Now, evidence. The evidence is all of the scientific data that supports your claim. Your evidence must be related to your claim. Not all data is considered evidence. And evidence can be specific data from the lab. This can come from your own group or sometimes you know, we'll share data in class. So it could come from other groups as well. Evidence, it can come from other sources, sometimes computer simulations, websites, textbooks, articles. Sometimes we'll have you write a CER or we may have you write a CER based on an article you read. Make a claim, support with evidence from the article, and then use reasoning to back it up or tie everything together. Um, you could use your class notes, sometimes personal experience. So there's lots of different things you could use as evidence. It's also important to have a numerous pieces of evidence. A lot of times in class we'll try and ask you to come up with at least three pieces of evidence, if possible. Sometimes you may not be able to come up with three because there aren't three pieces of evidence. But also, if there's more pieces of evidence, if you want the top grades in here, we want you to produce as many pieces of evidence as possible to pro prove your claim correct. So when we go back, we're going to use the same example we used in part one where this graph represents the relationship between the amount of spring rainfall recorded at a pond and the number of frogs in that pond. The data was collected over five spring seasons. So if you can remember, the question we wanted you to answer, make a claim about, is what is the relationship between the amount of rainfall at the pond and the number of frogs in the pond? And if we remember from part one, you really couldn't write a claim until you analyzed the evidence. So the evidence is one of the things that a lot of students will cover first. They'll look at the evidence, see what kind of claim they can make or justify with this evidence. So the relationship between the amount of rainfall at the pond and the number of frogs in the pond is that when there is more rainfall, there will be more frogs. So that's the claim we came up with. So now we have to look at the evidence that backs it up. Now there's a couple different ways you can write up your evidence. One of the ways that I use, and I'm going to use in this example, is I did it in paragraph form. I wrote it all out. One of the things you could also do is you could put this in bullet form, where you could have a bullet and then you have all of your facts. Now, the one thing I will caution you, if you have a bullet and you have your facts, you have to make sure all your facts are there. So first of all, let me read what I have here. In order to justify my claim, I used the provided graph to compare the amount of rainfall to the number of frogs found in the pond. So in other words, this is what I did. This is how I analyzed it. When there was five centimeters of rain in the pond, there were 20 frogs found in the pond. So if you look at the graph, yeah, when there was five centimeters of rain, we found 20 frogs. Now notice I said when there's five centimeters of rain in the pond, there was 20 frogs. Not when we found five, there was 20. I made sure I talked about five centimeters of rain, 20 frogs. Now, the one thing you'd have to caution yourself, if you want to put this in bullet form, you could have put a, a bullet and said, okay, when we found five centimeters of rain, there was 20 frogs found in the pond. Be careful not to just put five centimeters equals 20 frogs, because that's not fully explaining your evidence. When there was approximately eight centimeters rain in the pond, so notice it's not exactly on any line, so I approximated eight centimeters rain in the pond, there was approximately 33 frogs. So do the best you can with your approximation, and that's why I said approximately, because it's not right on one of these points, so you don't know for sure, and that's why I said approximately. So what you see here is when there was approximately 12.5 centimeters rain, there was approximately 44 frogs in the pond. When there's 20 centimeters rain in the pond, there was approximately 60 frogs found in the pond. And 20, 23 centimeters of rain in the pond, there was approximately 62 frogs in the pond. Basically what I did was I interpret this graph and I wrote out what I saw. So again, you can put this in bullet form, but it's going to be about the same length because you have to say, when there was approximately eight centimeters of rain in the pond, there was approximately 33 frogs found in the pond. You can't just have 
8 equals 33, 12.5 equals 44, 20 equals 60. You have to explain what the evidence is fully. So make sure you do that. Now, when we look at the evidence, you don't see it in here, but you might find some examples this year where when we talked about evidence, it says it can also come from other sources, and that's true. It's important to have numerous pieces, that's true. But let's look specifically at this one. Not all data is considered evidence. Sometimes you can use non-examples in class. For example, you might be able to say, well, if you look at these numbers, because they don't match up, this proves that it's not a choice. So sometimes in class you're going to be able to use non-examples or data that doesn't support yours actually to support it, to justify why, um, say, two, two minerals are the same, or two rocks are the same, or two unknown liquids are the same. So keep that in mind this year. Now, as we go through this, we got one more video on reasoning, and it's going to tie all this together. So as always, if you have any questions on how to write a claim, how to justify it with evidence, Make sure you ask me in class and we can go over it together before our next CER examination. Thanks.